My name is John Mathis. And I'm Isabel Mathis. I've been living in Singapore for coming on 12 years now, and I have one lovely daughter. And dog. And dog, and his name is? Tatsu. Tatsu. Nine, ten, bring it up. I'm Laura Greenwoods. I'm from the UK, and I've lived in Singapore for seven years. John Mathis hails from America. The relief Prince he creates captures Singapore's food culture from a unique perspective. One great thing about Singapore food is we have amazing flavors here to choose from. You live in the tropics and there's a lot of amazing spices and fruits and how do you make something out of that? And it's cheap. Just like I make prints, so I've got multiple copies that can be economic and share and people can participate in it. The food here is democratic as well. It's not for an elite. It's not something that only some people get to experience in its finest. It's like this wonderful chaos here. It's unstructured, it's colorful, it's loud, it's buzzing, everybody's just moving around all over the place. It's just much more fun. I can go here, I can go there, but I don't have to make a decision on what food I'm eating until I get here. You're gonna sweat, everybody's sweating. It's just very relaxing and a great time. One way of appreciating the culture of a country is through its cuisine. However, John finds the vitality of local hawkers particularly admirable. That's one reason why he likes Singapore. I'm making the print for many reasons, but also to celebrate the culture, the hawker culture. To me, it's something special, and I want to recognize that within Singapore culture. I'm making prints about Singapore food. And I love your shop, I want to give you. It's not just, oh, I'm going to go take a picture of them, I'm going to make a print of it, it's just a thing, and I move on to the next one. Thank you. If I can actually go to the people who are behind it, and I can show them and give them something, to me, it's a sign of appreciation. Not just for what they've presented to me that I can work from, but an appreciation for what they do and what they've done for years and years and years. Few people are into printmaking in Singapore. Each work requires meticulous attention to detail. It often takes John a month to complete a piece. I think the carving part is probably the most challenging. Sometimes it's tedious. You just kind of, I'm carving, I'm carving, I'm carving, and just kind of you put your brain on autopilot. And then I get to sections where it's very detailed carving, and I have to really focus and concentrate. Every weekend, dragon boat teams representing various countries would gather at Kalang River for training. Laura Greenwood from the UK is the captain of the British dragon boat team. The British dragons were formed in the year 2000. At that time, there was an international dragon boat community, the IDBC, here in Singapore and some other teams have started forming, like the Canadian Dragons, there's American Dragons, Australian Dragons. Um, so someone started up the British Dragons. So it grew from there, from 2000, and it's grown into a team now where we've got about 60 people on the team, about 17 different nationalities, and we regularly train about three or four times a week. <laughs> Laura joined the Dragon Boat team seven years ago. Then, a new arrival in Singapore, 
She was unfamiliar with the place and felt rather lonely. Yeah, okay, guys, you go over there for warm up. When I first joined the Dragon Boat team, so I wanted to, to do something that was going to keep me active and I wanted to find some kind of community or something where I could make friends. Five. Being away from home, it's nice to have a network around you of, of close friends and people. Okay, stand by, paddles up, and go. Laura was seeking a sense of belonging in this country she now calls home. After several years here, she has built strong bonds with her teammates. Taking part in races has also given her wonderful memories. One of the best races was the International Ice Dragon Boat Championships, which was in Inner Mongolia, and that was a real adventure. The boat, obviously it's not in the water, it's on ice. So the boat had blades on the bottom of it, and instead of paddles, you had like a, a pole with ice picks at the bottom and you have to dig in the pole and pull it back. We'd never tried that before at all, so it was a brand new experience for all of us, and it was so cold. It was minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'd never been so cold in my whole life. In this multinational dragon boat team, there are also Singaporean coaches and team members. They've come from different places, they have a different accent. It's a great way of interacting. I mean, they love to speak Singlish anyway, like la and ah and all that here. Yeah. They just love it. <laughs> We train hard together. It forms those connections, and people continue those connections outside the boat and outside our, our formal trainings as well. I think it's just natural that we've become close. We get on really well, and it has got that family feel of all of us looking out for each other. John Mathis is from California, USA. He and his eight-year-old daughter Isabel now call Singapore home. Both of them have been through difficult times. My wife passed away about four years ago. She'd been ill for a year, and my daughter was four years old at the time. So, obviously, it was very difficult, naturally. John's wife had cancer. She was originally from Hong Kong. They had married after moving to Singapore. Isabel was born a few years later. John's wife's death was a huge blow to their blissful life. You can imagine how difficult it is for a four-year-old to articulate what she's thinking and what she's feeling. I sat down with Izzy a few days before my wife passed, and we talked for a couple hours about what's happening, that what she's thinking and what she's feeling is happening. So when we finished talking, and she's like, oh, can we go, great, can we go draw a picture? And that was, that was kind of the first one. She was given a direction as to who's in here and where everybody is, and her mother and me with Tatsu, our dog, and Izzy with her well, it's an imaginary cat, we don't have a cat. So yes, that's what we drew. So that was the first one we did together. Where's the play test? Like in the park? Yeah, in the Alps. In the Alps park? It's kind of an art therapy that Izzy and I worked out together. It helps her in expressing herself and getting it out there. Italian-y. It's kind of what, all of what kind of food do they like to eat? It helps me 
understand what's going on with her? Steven. Steven. And Switzen. Switzen. Something that's really surprised me with Izzy is how resilient she is. She feels it, feels the loss, and of course you're sad. You don't, you know, we, you, nobody's gonna say, oh, you shouldn't be sad. Yeah, be sad. I mean, it's, you don't have to be happy about what's going on. But you also don't have to, you know, dwell on it as long as you need to dwell on it. And then keep your journey going. Good boy. His daughter's stories became the inspiration for his art, which also featured Tatsu, their faithful companion. In the series, the family of three encounters all kinds of adventures. One of her story, what she told me was, if Lightning was a girl who fell in love with me and wanted to marry me, that was the whole thing. You know, some more questioning and all that, and it just became very clear, this is like, go get married, whatever. And so uh, it was a very positive and future thinking uh, idea for her. What I like about Singapore is that most of my friends are there, so I can easily just walk up to Tim and say, hi, hi. What I like about America is that most of my family is there. It's basically the same with friends, but I know them, I know them a little better. I once visited my cousin Caroline there with her parents, my un uncle Robert, my dad's brother, and my grandpa. I don't know his name though. Jack. Frack? Jack. Grandpa Jack. As a single parent, John had resigned from his job in advertising in order to spend more time with his daughter. And I could see Izzy really needed me around. I was getting home late. She was having a lot of challenges that were just very difficult for her. So I needed her. It was a good time for me too. She needed me, so left. And I was doing the printmaking at home. Now it's me and you. And we're on this together. Laura Greenwood, who grew up in the UK, has always been fascinated with Asian culture. When she came across a job opportunity in Singapore, she took it. I actually, I didn't know anything really about Singapore before I moved here. When I got here, I was surprised that it, it was small. I mean, I knew it was small, but uh, everything's so close together, which is great. It's nice to be able to get to lots of different places really easily. The first place that Laura lived was in the colorful Geelang area. Unfazed by its reputation, she often ventured out to explore the area as a way to appreciate local culture. I was living on Lorong 27A, I think it was, and right opposite my place there was this amazing like Buddhist temple. So I would hear a lot of chanting and things like that, which was amazing. It felt so exotic to me. During her free time, Laura often meets up with her teammates. I've been out with the Singaporean teammates. We all go out together. And normally when we're at international races, they're really good at ordering the foods as well and knowing what's good to order. It's been seven years since she arrived in Singapore. This is the first time she's savoring the king of fruits. Okay, so you can try it. Okay. I didn't really know what to expect. I'd had durian flavored cakes and chocolate, but never eaten durian itself. So first time trying it. This was a bittersweet one, which was good. Nice. I've known Laura for seven years now. We are like a family. Socialising with them, you know, over drinks and all that. It's also team bonding. Verena was very good at helping show me how to do it and eat it. 
So, good first experience. Daisy, pour it in there. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of water. <laughs> Marina said you put water in the shell, help cool you down after you've eaten durian because it's heaty. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers. So that's a new concept that I'm learning about heaty. Lovely. And to hydrate and a nice refreshing drink afterwards. So very nice. <laughs> that's why I was saying going for you. Printmaking has connected John to a number of local art practitioners. Hello. 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 How have you been? Is this the owner? Just no, this is the Omar. Chen Chen once shared a studio with him. I'm going to need you to hold this in your right hand. Okay, pull it all the way up. Okay, your right hand goes here. It's kind of interesting being in a shared studio is you get multiple people here all doing things, but we're all doing different things. But then you get talking and it's like, oh, what are you working on and what's it like? And it's different than what you do. Yes, you got it. So I know what a loom is within a maker community. And I've got an appreciation for what you're doing and I'd like to learn more about it to understand how you tell your story. 我觉得John一向来就是他会以人的故事拿出来讲的比较多他的素材会比较注重说那个human story 他会把他女儿的感情的心情都呈现在他的作品里面而你真正仔细的去看他那些不一样的吃的地方的时候其实你都会发现到他每一个里面都会有一个人物的故事而不只是一个招牌我们就想到说有时候他真的很忙的时候然后认识他很久了才真正了解说他的家庭状况我们就想到说有时候他真的很忙的时候然后学校放假他的女儿没人帮他顾他带来办公室的话有时候我就跟他说你就把女儿先放
people who are expats but also Singaporeans and they want to work hard but they also want to socialise and have fun together and go on adventures travelling together. So it just feels like I've met a lot of like-minded people here in Singapore. The art sector was hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. John felt the impact on his livelihood keenly, especially as a single parent providing for his family's needs. He decided to return to the advertising industry, but he still keeps his studio. I recognize this is not something I'm going to make a living off of by printmaking. It is, it's an interest for all the reasons I've told you. It's not going to pay the bills. You know, if it pays for itself and a little bit more, that's great. But it also means that you end up having to work. I mean, you got to get a real job and, and it becomes something you do on the side. And on the weekends and spare time when you're not doing what pays the bills. So fortunately, I have that opportunity. I am working. And so the studio work, the printmaking work, it lives, it lives on, it continues because I have more stories to tell and Izzy and I have more stories together to still tell. John still has much hope for the future. Although he's uncertain about returning to America, he's certain about one thing. Singapore has left an indelible mark on his life. I think Singapore, yes, it has changed my life and I've grown quite a bit, obviously. It's given me some great experiences and continues to do so. I met my wife, I got married, I have my daughter, we live here. I mean, these are life-changing experiences. And wherever you may be going through them, so you're experiencing it. You do look at things differently and you communicate differently when you move out of your comfort zone. My home country is America. And, you know, if there's a second home, I mean, it's, it's, def it's Singapore. <laughs>